righty hey everybody i uh, hope you're having a wonderful day uh, i'm out here in the woods again i ain't feeling 100 percent. got a little bit of a head cold that old crud's going around i'm sure you know with the weather changing the way it's been going getting cold and still warm and hot and cold and whatnot uh but anyway we're pressing along i've got a load here uh that's ready to load and this load actually was supposed to go out last night today's saturday saturday morning and this load was supposed to go out yesterday but the last log we loaded on yesterday afternoon broke a yoke on the side loader pto shaft so i had to take time this morning and fix it so i've got it fixed and i've got this little old deck of logs here that's ready to go mule's done a good job of bunching that little old uh deck of logs too i think but anyway uh we've got this little old deck of logs ready to go on the truck it should finish out the load i think and uh i'm gonna go ahead and get it to the mill and this afternoon when i get back i'll try to get some footage of us getting out some more logs i'll show y'all kind of what we got going here uh we've got two poppers down this is one of them and then we've got another one right over here these three poppers come off with the same stump here and anytime you've got three off the same stump uh, you can about bank on the butts being hollow. And I mean, you can see what I'm talking about. So I had to go up the butt log here. I had to go up six feet or so to get out of that hollow. And y'all, ain't no point in hauling that mess into the mill. I mean, they can't, time they square it up, they can't get nothing out of it. You know, so there ain't no point in hauling that mess in. You ain't gonna get paid for it no way. Uh, but anyway, whenever we get back, uh, I didn't cut this popper here uh, because it's going to be across my road going in and out right here. And uh, y'all can see right up through there, that's my road going in and out. And if I fall it, it's going to land right across my road. Now, once I get back and get the truck spotted down here to where we've got room, then I'll start skidding and that one that one there will be the first one I skid out just because I can open the road back up, if that makes any sense. So anyway, uh, we should have a full load of poplar on the second load, ready to go to mill this afternoon, Lord willing, if something else don't break. And y'all, I mean, I've done been accustomed to it, and I know y'all seen it a lot on my videos. You know, when you're working with old equipment, stuff's gonna tear up, it's gonna break. Ain't no point in panicking. Ain't no point in getting bent out of shape about it. You know, you just, if you do, you ain't gonna do nothing but hurt yourself anyway. You just take the time to fix it and move on with life. That's all part of it. We are gonna go to a skid steer loader one of these days. Soon, I hope. I hope in the spring. Uh, good Lord willing, if we can everything hold together. Uh, and we can get a few things situated. In the spring, we're gonna go to a, a big skid steer. And that'll help us a lot, loading the truck, pushing brush, clearing roads, just stacking logs. I mean, the skid steer are so versatile. And I'm gonna keep the side loader for now anyway, as a backup, you know, and then if the skid steer breaks down, we can still load logs with the, skid, uh, with the side loader and keep on trucking. Right now we got one method and that's, that's the side loader. And unfortunately that's not a good thing when you only got one way to, to do it. It's always best to have more than one way to do something if you can. And that way, if you break down, it ain't no big deal. You just keep rolling. Cause like for me, I cut timber through the week and then I try to start skidding. Sometimes I'll skid through the week. This week I did, uh, I worked, let's see, we worked mules, I think Tuesday and Thursday, just a little bit. And then I started getting sick and I just didn't feel like it. No, I worked them Tuesday and I was scheduled to work them again on Thursday, but I didn't feel good. So, uh, we came down yesterday and I skidded out just a few logs. It didn't take about 20 minutes. And I had this little old deck here and I had that done. Uh, but what I was getting at was, you know, I worked during the week cutting timber and sometimes I'll skid depending on if everything's getting wadded up. Cause you don't want a wadded up mass if you can help it. Uh, but I had everything set up for the weekend to where I could get all three loads in today. One last night and two today. And then when you break down, when something breaks down like this, and it's the main part of your operation, you can't move timber. And when you're not moving timber, y'all, you ain't making no money. And when you ain't making no money, your business is hurting. 
So it's always best to have more than one avenue to do the same job. So when we add a skid steer to the operation, it'll be our primary means of loading the truck, stacking logs, sorting logs, and all that other good mess. But we'll always have the side loader as a backup. And eventually, one of these days, I'm gonna go to a tandem axle truck. Once I get the skid steer and get it paid for and all that good mess, we're gonna go to a tandem axle truck just to get more footage and you know better fuel mileage per board foot you know all that good stuff i won't go into that but anyway even when we go to a tandem truck the skid steer is still going to be a primary means of loading but we'll still have the side loader as a backup and if something tears up or breaks down we can keep moving footage and that's most important anyway y'all uh, hang tight here a second and we'll get it going He's gonna shoot for that hole right up there. See if he can make it. Boy, that dude right there now, he's something else with his side loader, y'all. I'm gonna tell you, he can put it right where he wants it. Ain't nothing short about you but your paycheck. What? Said, ain't nothing short about you but your paycheck. That's perfect. got to put his pegs in now when you put these extensions on the loader forks you got to put your pegs in them pegs will be the same height as a as a stands on this side in a perfect world you want to load just a little heavy on the driver's side uh, to allow for rope crown if you can help it That's good. That is a little bent, Skyler. It's a little bit bent, so it won't go all the way down in there. Oh, that last one we loaded right there. Uh, it didn't want to get on the fork over on that one end. I had to help him. I had to hold it while he Lifted up on it. So I wasn't able to get it on camera but We wanted to go up against the stakes there didn't quite make it it rolled on over But that's all right. We're gonna to try to put this one in that hole and then we'll fill in the last hole with the other one and That should have us took care of I hope This will be about 1500 feet here <laughs> got to where it was big logs and was aggravating or whatnot we would move the truck over he's gonna have to move the truck here anyway because that log ain't gonna it ain't gonna fit on the stand so he's gonna ease the truck up and uh 
that way he can get it on the fork. But if we had a lot of logs lined out here, we would roll two or three up there on it, load them, and then move the truck over, load two or three more, and then move the truck over, you know, and then keep from having to do so much peavy work. One thing you try to do when you're loading logs is minimize air gaps. I mean, we've got some like right there, right there. When you've got a knuckle bone loader or some type of loader where you can really place your logs and take them back off if you need to, that's when you can really get your air gaps out and stack the footage on the truck. With this side loader, you can't really do it. Once you put it up there, it's there. And it's unproductive to try to get it back off Sometimes we'll get up on top and roll it though. All right. She ain't the most perfect load in the world, but it ain't the worst load in the world either. Remember, you want that covered wagon. That's what you're looking for. That ain't too bad. Skylar's gonna get the truck turned around for us here. Fifteen years old, y'all. He does pretty good. He's real careful with things. That's why I let him do what he does. Cause he's real careful and easy with stuff. That's what it takes doing this kind of work. always taught him if you'll go slow and easy even if you bump something you know you just about ain't gonna tear nothing up because sometimes when you're by yourself you can't see you know where to go exactly you can't see every little thing of in probably three months I know if not more well there's another 1500 foot load headed out thank goodness all right now before everybody gets too excited and wonders what in the world I'm doing putting an upside down notch in this tree uh, this is actually called a Humboldt Notch. This is more of a West Coast thing. Uh, we don't use them on the East Coast a whole lot, but there is a couple things I do like to use them for. When I have to cut a high stump, like when fence wire is in a tree, or you got three coming off of a one old stump like this one here, or such as that, I like to put an upside down notch in it just to keep from using up so much of the log. Uh, if I've got to high stump it anyway. And probably more importantly than that is the fact that it's gonna throw the butt in the dirt first. If you use a conventional notch, 
when it falls and hits the ground, it's gonna hit kind of the top first. And if y'all watch this thing, whenever I cut it, it's gonna slip off the stump and hit butt first, and you've got a less chance of busting the log that way. And on a high stump, that's kind of important. Now this tree does have some forward lean to it, or head lean, so that's why I'm bore cutting it, getting the hinge established, and this will prevent it from busting or barbecuing. Uh, this can kill you as a timber cutter. It's very dangerous. Uh, not to mention the fact that you lose every bit of the monetary value of the tree. And this is a poplar. And again, that's another reason why I put in a Humboldt knot is to throw the butt in the dirt and that'll help keep from busting the log out. Y'all can kind of see how it works here in just a second. See how that butt took the majority of the shot? There we go. Now see here, whenever I pick up my tongs, I've got my driving line in my left hand and my tongs in my right hand. So, you know, I've, I've got plenty of hands to do what I need to do. And I'm not saying you can't hold a set of team lines, you know, with one hand and turn. Uh, that's easy enough to do. Uh, the team kind of learns to just turn as you move, you know, even with team lines. I'm just saying that's what I like to do. I like it better with one line, but that's just me. Again, another advantage to working with stretchers and, and uh, tongs is being able to bunch your logs like I'm doing here. And y'all, there's a method to the madness on working a side loader truck, uh, skidding up here to it. You know, you kind of got to pick your logs where they are going to go on the truck. You know, if you need a small log to fill a hole in or you need to put a big log here or a big log there, you kind of have to pick and choose which logs you drag up there. Uh, you know, because we have to manhandle them with the PB. So they kind of have to be in order, you know. And, uh, you know, you pull a few up there, load them, see what you need, then pull a few more up there.
Now on this log, and I believe the next one after this one, I use my uh, head grabs. And I'm using my skip hammer here to knock grabs out. If you don't drive the grabs in too awful tight, and you leave just a little bit of a gap in the in the uh, in between the log and the grabs, you usually can just hit it one time and knock it right out. It's not a real big deal. I drove them in a little tight, uh, probably a little tighter than they needed to have been. Uh, but anyway, I chose to use my grabs instead of my tongs on that one just because it was a pretty good sized log. And also I wanted to use my grabs just for uh, the sake of doing it. Now, for any of y'all that are new to our channel and are confused about this one line driving, I will put a link in the description below to a video we made a couple years ago uh, that details the one line. So that way y'all can go watch that video and you'll totally understand how it works and what and uh, how it's used. Now see how easy that was just to walk them right up there to it, turn them around, and now I'm gonna get them hooked. And when you're, you know, working up in tops like this, uh, it's easier, especially in like blown down timber, it's easier to get around in there uh, with the stretchers and tongs or grabs like I'm using here versus uh, trying to get a log cart in there and getting it turned around. A lot of times you'll have to long chain stuff and uh, that can get dangerous in its own way also turning the cart over and stuff. Uh, but it takes a lot of extra time getting the cart turned around too. But if you got a long way to go, you got a long way to go. And if you got a long way to go, the cart is a better option because it's easier for the mule to pull. Now I'm gonna let them pull this brush out that's piling up in front of this log. I'm gonna let them pull it clean out of the way over there to the other side of our road and get our road cleared. Make sure we clean the road out. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, 
Now this one's got a couple little stubs sticking out of it and the uh, limb still hung on it. Now that I got it out there in the open where I can do something, I'll get my saw here and trim it up. Now I'm gonna stage this log right here for now cause we're gonna need it here in a few minutes. Uh, but Skyler needed a little help scooting this big log over onto the lo loader forks. Uh, he couldn't quite get it by himself with the peavy. So we'll just take the mules and use them. They're a lot stronger than we are. Some uh, marking up hickory on the bottom, 
so that'll be a heavier lower uh, center of gravity of load with the pumper on top.
Yeah. Now y'all, we route our chains in a, in a manner that hooks to the frame on both sides. And basically it goes around the loader forks up over the top and then down on the other side around the trip stands on the offside and back to the frame. And that way, whenever we tighten our binders, we've got the loader forks captured and the trip stands captured in the binder chain. So if something should happen and something come loose somewhere, the binder chain is going to hold the load if that makes any sense. Well, y'all, we got to get this load into the mill. Load number two for us this weekend. Thank you, good Lord. Y'all have a good one, and thank you very much for watching.